This is a Now Magazine podcast. Hey, Toronto, and welcome to Now What? I'm Norm Wilner, senior film writer for Now Magazine, and I'm also your host for this podcast, coming to you every Friday with the news and culture stories we think you need to hear. This week, it's Now's annual Sound of Toronto Right Now issue, so we're dedicating this episode to editor Raddy and Simon Pillay's epic and extremely entertaining conversation with rapper and TikTok sensation Akintoye about coming up, finding his voice, building a brand, and being absolutely 100% himself through all of it. The interview constitutes the entirety of this podcast, but don't worry, there's so much stuff we had to split it into two parts. The second drops tomorrow, so keep an eye on your podcast feed. But right now, here's Rad talking to Akintoye about music. I'm not on TikTok, so please forgive me. It was our music editor, Richard. He's like, hey, Rad, I think you'll like this guy. And he sent me some of your TikTok videos. He's like, motherfucker, of course I, yeah, like, I do like this guy. Explain how this works, please. I don't understand it. But uh, yeah, yeah. So he brought that to me, uh, to my attention. And uh, so, I mean, so this is going to be a profile. Of course, I want to know everything, who you are, how you got into this music. But I also, I didn't realize, so you won our Reader's Choice of like for tick, like uh, was it last year? He said that you won a Reader's Choice, the now Reader's Choice. I think I, I think I did. <laughs> I can see how insignificant it is. That's like I, 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 think, I, I would say it's insignificant. That was pretty. That was pretty cool though. I, I think I, yeah. But yeah, yeah. So like, so that was so. So this will be great. It's like a little homecoming. You went from Reader's Choice to the San of Toronto. But yeah, I mean, so like, we'll start with the kind of. I, I, it may sound boring. I don't know where we discovered something interesting, but the bio fact. So, uh, born and raised. Talk to me. Um, so I was born in Lagos, Nigeria. Um, I moved to uh, just outside of Toronto uh, in 2009, like right before I turned 10 years old. Okay, um, okay. I, that's around when I got into music, too. I started going to new middle school and I didn't really know anybody. And, and, and I was just kind of there. Um, the, the, coming to a new country as an immigrant around the age of, of 10, those are some formative years like you kind of already know who you are a little bit but you're still trying to figure out who you are and yeah, you come yeah. here, you don't really know what's going on um i came here it was very clear to me off rip like i'm, I'm not to say there's everybody else here they don't they they, 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 they they were raised the same way i was raised Nigeria, wait, 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 can you be specific about where though you said outside of toronto oh fun <laughs> yeah. oh well, fuck see I, brampton i feel would have been more accommodating oh okay. <laughs> right there's hella Nigerians there, but you know what's funny? There's there's a bunch of Nigerians here too. You'd be surprised. Bon? Yeah, all, all, over the last couple, over the last like I want to say seven, eight. Oh, okay, okay, but not like, when you moved there. Oh, when I moved here, I didn't know anybody. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, literally just family members. Um, right. I had an uncle. I, I had two uncles out here, and 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 literally aside from like my cousin three, I didn't know anybody, and they're way younger than I am, so I literally had no one. Um, so, so I moved up here and I was just kind of like, I, I, I could already tell that I wasn't necessarily on the same page as everybody else, as most immigrants are, um, yeah. especially as a kid. Um, but my uh, music teacher uh, at one of those little end of the year middle school concerts where they get the kids to hold hands and they sing a song and they dance and they, you know, um, she was like, hey, this was right around when the Haiti earthquakes had happened. Um, uh-huh. And I think it was waving flag. Cardinal had made waving flag, and Drake was on there, and Bieber was on there, and it was all these people on there, and we were doing our like little cute little kid rendition of it. And my teacher was like, "Hey, we need somebody to rap the Drake verse. Do you want to do it?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure. Why not? All right, I'll do it." I'm like, I'm not thinking anything of it. I'm ten. I'm not thinking anything of it. Um, I get on the stage, and while I'm rapping, and I was like, "Oh my god, this is the greatest thing that I have ever felt in my entire life." I didn't know. I was like, I don't know what this is. I can't even describe it, but I need this in my yeah. life every day. Um, so literally from that day forward, I grown up on, on, on like my dad, especially in Nigeria too. Like back in the day, we're driving around and, and, and my dad had Biggie CDs on spin. Um, uh, so I grew up on Biggie. Like I was really familiar with Biggie. Right, um, right, right. At that point I was like, no, nah, I'm doing a deep dive. So I dove into hip hop head first, um, fell in love with the, with the real old school guys of this most deaf, big L, a uh, 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 big pun like I, I went I went as far back as I could go um, even listen to Eric B even listen to, to rock him get on there and, 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 and rip it like way way back did it did a really deep dive Jay-Z is one of my huge influences obviously the newer guys Kendrick Cole and, and, right. and J.I.D. somebody from the new school I love but I, I decided Eminem too I decided to do my really really deep dive into hip-hop and over the course of sort of my end of middle school all through high school years I was just learning and just absorbing as much as I could absorb. I've been writing pretty much every day since I was a kid. Um, 
I have anxiety and just my brain generally, there's a lot of things going on. So it's the only way I can organize the things that are happening in my head is just sort of putting them somewhere so I could see them. So I, I pretty much write every day. By the time I got to university um, uh, in 2016, I had made the decision, you know what, I'm just going to start making music. So top of 2020 or top of 2017, um, convinced my dad to take me to Long and McQuaid, picked up the, 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 the one level above $30 mic setup. You know what I mean? It got like a setup and I was like, all right, I could use this for a couple of years while I learn what I'm doing. Um, yeah. Got an AT2020 and a Focusrite Scarlet, like the solo. And I was just like, I'm going to figure it out. Had a MacBook Air. I ain't even had no space on the laptop for real to be able to record. I had to delete old songs to record a new song. Um, and and sort of from there, just started recording. I was recording remixes and posting them on SoundCloud. And they were kind of whack. I'm not going to lie to you. They were kind of, they were kind of trash. Um, <laughs> but I mean, you know, when you dive in, I didn't really know anybody who was making music at the time, personally. Like, I knew I knew of people, but I didn't know people. Right. Uh, so I was kind of just in my dorm with the mic in my closet, um, trying to make it happen. And nothing was happening. Uh, over the course of my university years, I uh, um, met one of my best friends to this day who produces all my stuff, Dan Vuko, amazing musician. So Vuko, is he Italian from Vaughn? <laughs> no, no, no. But funny enough, he is... I think he, he's half white and half Mexican. Oh, okay, okay. I think That's he's from cool. Newmarket. Yeah, he's from Newmarket. Um, but we met in Hamilton, uh, where we went to school at. Was um, it Masters? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. Um, so, so, uh, so yeah, so we we linked up and we had started making music. And at this point, we started building a little buzz around campus. Like, I knew people around campus. I was just very social initially over the first couple of years. Um, so, but we did a show in 2019. Um, right. Just to uh, pause for one second. Um, when you're saying you're building buzz, is this on off music on SoundCloud? It has it's not TikTok yet, right? Yeah, yeah. so th- this is entirely SoundCloud. I yeah. started experimenting with like Spotify and Apple Music, but it, th- the numbers weren't crazy. It was like right, right, right. Yeah, a couple hundred, like right, if right. maybe a hundred fifty. Like, um, <laughs> so so, twenty nineteen. At this point, like enough people around school knew who we were and what we were doing to where we decided, okay, we're gonna do a show, and we were able to pull about a hundred people in the uh, 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 in this in this room. And, and that day, I remember that day so clearly because I remember waking up and I had gone to work. I work with this, uh, 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 I had worked at the time with this performing rights organization, um, or the performing arts organization, not performing rights, performing arts organization. We work with youth and kids and, and just little kids in general. Um, and around the same time I was doing the show, because we work with the school board and middle schoolers, and I would go into classes and the kids were like, coach you gotta you got you gotta you gotta download you have tiktok you gotta download tiktok and they're doing the dances and i was like yo i'm 20 years old i was like guys i'm too old for this this is me at 20 thinking I'm- <laughs> you know i mean i was I'm like 40 <laughs> you're not even you you're yeah you're 40 for real i'm 40 so like this is why i'm saying like yo tiktok i'm like I don't, I'm, I'm wrapping my head around this shit it's like you look like you look like one of my teachers in middle school and he was like 26 anyway <laughs> yeah. so thank you, thank you yeah um uh yeah, so the kids are like, they're like, download TikTok. And I'm like, I don't know what that is. Ah, I'm, I'm not, not going to do it. I was like, I don't think this is for me. Then one of my homegirls was like, hey, you should download TikTok. Just check it out. Like, not telling me to make videos, but just like, it's funny. I want to send you videos. Download it so I can send you stuff that you can watch. Right. I was like, All right, whatever. Downloaded it. And I've been posting videos on my Instagram already. Um, but the only people who knew I made music, again, were people I knew personally. Like, everybody that, like, no one knew I made music. I had right. no real follower of, of, of any kind. When I made my TikTok, um, I had thrown up videos I already posted on Instagram and they didn't do anything. I just kind of threw them up there. They didn't really get no views or nothing like that. Right. Uh, and then, so 2019, uh, November, we do the show. And that night I was like, this is amazing. This is awesome. We have to do another one. So we make another project between November and drop it in March. Um, oh. Another like 12 song album. Drop it. Then COVID hits <laughs> and all of a sudden we can't do the shows no more. Right. So everything goes straight out the window. And at this point we're like, damn, like, like, what do we do, bro? Like we, we literally, I'm an asthmatic. I, I'm not even gambling with COVID. I'm not even risking it. Like I'm just in the house, locked down. Everyone in my family is asthmatic. I literally cannot go anywhere. Right. Um, so, and again, this is pre-vax and you remember how terrified everybody was. Like it was a, it was yeah. a scary time. Uh, uh, so, at this point, I want to say, I think it was the last day of April. I think it was the very last day of April, 2020. And I had seen this rap challenge going around on TikTok. And I was like, 
I'll, I'll do one. Why not? Like, I'm just in the crib. I'm like, I'll do one, whatever. Like, I can't go anywhere. Um, so I sit down and, and, and record this challenge, record the audio, record the video. And right when I finished recording it, I opened my TikTok app and the dude who made the challenge goes, all right, guys, challenge over. It's closed. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, bro, I just record, like, all right, whatever. I'm posting it anyway. Yeah. So I posted it. I remember throwing it up and I had 44 followers on TikTok, 44. And I knew every single one. Um, and the next day it hit like 10 K views and I lost my mind. I was like, I've never seen 10 K. The most I had ever seen thousand on anything was 1000. And it was on a song. <laughs> I, was, I was losing my mind, freaking out. Um, then all of a sudden, by the end of the week, it was at a million views. And at this point, I'm just like, bro, what is happening? Like, <laughs> like what is, what is going on? What is this? then it's two, then it's three. And, and for a while, that was my most popular video, but I was at the point where I was like, all right, like, let's, let's see, let's see how this thing kind of works. So I post another video and then that one hits a million views. And I was like, okay, 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 okay. Post another one. That one hits a million. And I was like, Oh, hold on. Like, wait, how many, uh, how much did, you know, you were, you, you said you had like what, 44 followers when you posted that first one, did, did the follower count jump off that first one? Like to what? Like to like 40 K. Oh, wow. Okay. Off one video. 30, 30 or 40 K off the first yeah. one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then by the time I was posting the other ones, all of a sudden I'm building up, boom, 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 boom. I'm at like 95 K and I was like, oh yeah, this is a thing for real. Like this is, this is really, really a thing at this point it's towards, and I was posting videos once a week. I wasn't posting very often, just like once a week. Um, this is before I knew what it was going to be. Cause nowadays I post, you maybe catch me posting seven days a week on, on some weeks, but right, right. Wait, time, uh, so is that video still on your TikTok profile? Like if I go way to the beginning, it'll be there the way to the beginning it's it's the splash challenge you and you really that, do post like once a day so it's gonna have to go stroll for a long time yeah but the 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 um the yeah yeah so so the, the thing blows up and, and all these videos are going viral and i was like okay okay this is this is a thing for real and celebrities are joining on and it's still quarantine right so everybody's on tiktok and charlie puth is posting remix challenges and i'm on there rapping and at this point i'm sort of just almost treating it like a workshop, like just practicing the pen game and getting in that bag. You know what I mean? Just really trying to figure out like, all right, all right, what, what combos could I put together? Like, what could I do this? That's weird and strange. And I've been, I'm so used to rapping on and remixing like songs that I've been rapping on all these years yeah. sort of blended perfectly to this platform where I could get on there and people could be like, Oh, I know this beat. Oh, what? He snapped on this beat. And all of a sudden somebody's like, all right, I'm gonna stick around. Um, so couple of videos that started doing some numbers i had a little i had a couple months where i had, I had com come back to school for my last year um and i was kind of in a the, the videos weren't really going viral for a bit i kind of that summertime heat it sort of cooled off a little bit and then by the end of the year i dropped uh uh the, the first project you can listen to on my uh spotify right now which is called vertigo and at this point this is a, this is an album that we made mostly remotely like half remotely and then half in a student house right. um, so and it was in a in my bedroom, funny enough, in the student house. Student house. Anyway, uh, so so we recorded, uh, dropped the project. First time we've ever released music to people who didn't know who we were, like people who didn't know us personally. Right, uh, right. Posted it. To this day, I don't know the exact number, but it has like upwards of 2 million streams on the whole project to this day. And at the time, I was like, oh, my God, this is insane. Drop, we dropped it in December. And I, like around two weeks after the album had dropped, we had already started recording the next one. Um, so finishing up like sort of the last semester of school and realizing like, all right, bro, like after this one, like <laughs> it's, it's now or never, bro. Like if I don't, if I don't figure it out, if I don't get the other, I'm being a very, very rough position. So we work on this next project called centerpiece, which is my most recent project that dropped in July last year. And we were kind of in this space where we're like, all right, like all of us knew it, but we weren't saying it, but we were like, yo, like. Like we need something to, we need something to happen soon, bro. Like, yeah, you know I mean, we need, we need, we need to start. This is around the time where things need to start changing for us. Cause if things don't change over the next few months, we're going to have to go get regular jobs. And at that point now music becomes a side hustle and you have to figure out how to balance those two. And I was tired of balancing it. And how many followers are you at at this point? I want to say maybe I had cracked 200 K maybe I had just cracked. 200K. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, so, uh, 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 so, so school ends. And you remember there was like, couple lockdowns like and, and around i want to say april ish again funny enough me in april bro. i remember because i have two kids and like yeah like we i think we sent them back finally in april right mm -hmm. like it was like we didn't return for march break right right, right, right. exactly exactly right. so we were on lockdown again so now i'm in my parents house and i'm on lockdown again and i'm sitting mm. 
all right, like, I don't have a job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally in my parents' crib. This is the bedroom I've slept in my, like, you know, the whole time I've been in this country. I was like, I'm going to turn this room into, into whatever I need it to be. Got my hands on some, some, you know, uh, 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 some soundproofing equipment, not actual, like a blanket and a mattress. Um, <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'm going to record a video and post every single day over the course of the month of May. So literally every day I would wake up, literally my bed's right here. I would, I would wake up, roll out of bed, come here, record, write, record, write all day. They play some video games for like an hour go back to sleep and repeat every single day. Um, and at that point, like TikTok's a really interesting platform because when you're consistent, yeah, people are going to give it back to you. It's yeah. almost a point where they're like, hey, come on, bro. You're a part of my day. Like, like, I, like I need something. <laughs> so I'm posting and I'm posting and I'm posting. And that's when I started watching the followership grow. And I was getting, you know, a couple of, I was catching a, a, a hot streak of just viral videos over and over and over again. Right. So yeah. At this point, the followership shot up a few hundred thousand next thing i know by the end of the summer i'm sitting at about a million followers yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, and at this point i'm like i'm like all right oh and while this is happening we had dropped the project centerpiece um and centerpiece was was is still the most recent project and i'm I'm gonna talk about it as was because we're working on a new project and centerpiece ain't got nothing on this new project but um at the time centerpiece was like all right i kind of have an idea of who i want to be in this space now um and and not to say that I ever stopped figuring it out, but Centerpiece was the most confident project that I had made to date. So we dropped it. People loved it. The numbers is going nice. Um, I was really on there rapping, you know what I mean? Doing my thing, trying to get in that bag. Um, and then by the end of the summer, the social media is growing and just everything was going really, really great. I had started getting paid for stuff this last summer. I had never made a, a cent off of anything. Right. Uh, I was still asking my dad to send me 60 bones so I could load my presto and take the, take the cell phone. <laughs> one of those ones. Um, this is why you have a million followers. This is why I have a million followers. <laughs> <laughs> a million followers and I'm still, you know what I mean, loading up the presto and trying to make it do what it needs to do. So right. um, uh, so then I started working with, with different brands and Team USA had reached out and Champion had reached out for a campaign. And by the end of the summer, like we were lining up a few. What do those campaigns look like? Like, um, so typically, so, so they, they're, I saw they're, your wealth simple ad, which is just like, I guess I looked at your video, then all of a sudden Twitter gave me you on wealth simple. And I'm like, Hey, <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that the wealth simple was extra funny. Cause like, I'm getting people that I haven't talked to in five years. Like, bro, you're on every time I open my phone, you're on my phone, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, I've seen it. <laughs> um, so they all look a little different. So initially the team USA one was just to do it. They had a uh, uh, Kato, the producer making a beat. And they were like, yeah, we just want you to rap on the beat. I was like, sweet, all right, I could do that. Like, you know what I mean? I, I do that for free every day. I could, I could do that right now, absolutely. It's the first time I ever got paid. Um, then uh, Champion reached out and they wanted to do a full campaign where, you know what I mean? I make a song and, and, and there's the video. Um, so I made them the original song and, and uh, Dan and I got in there and chef something funky up, got it together. Um, and, and they used it as part of a... a, 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 a uh, a TikTok campaign. They had other creators using the sound, and it was really, really dope. Um, and then, sort of around that time frame, we had a few. I had, I had met my manager, uh, 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 Brian, who's the biggest reason I'm able to make any money off of this thing. Because if not for this man, I would just be out here, um, <laughs> be like uh, knocking on Harvey's doors, like, "Hey, you want to advertise on my TikTok?" I mean, like, like I, I, I would be, I'd be struggling. <laughs> So, so I met my manager and at this point, companies started reaching out. Now I'm actually making like more money than I was making before I was making $0 before. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, so then after dropping centerpiece in July, right away. And I feel like this is sort of, this is what I love about Dan and I, and, and, and just the people I create with is that as soon as we drop, we're like, all right, bro, let's get back in the time to work again. <laughs> um, so we got back and we've been working on this project for, for the last couple of months. Um, the TikTok's been growing at the same time. I'm doing my thing, still trying to, you know what I mean, get the eyes we need and build the eyes up so that when we drop this next thing that we're dropping, right. uh, more people are going to grab onto it. And at this point, we could take it as far as we really, really want to take it. Yeah. Uh, so as far as like, I kind of gave you like my whole life story. No, 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 and I love it. because, But I am going to backtrack to a few things and clarify a few things, right? But I mean, like uh, just off the top there, right? Like, I mean, 
you're dropping these albums uh centerpiece on on like spotify right i guess i guess on all, all the platforms right i mean and and this is like i mean feed my curiosity as much as you can as much as you feel comfortable with because like i mean the economic structure of this is really fascinating to me because i understand that spotify doesn't pay great based on streams i don't know how does that work for tiktok though does i mean it sounds like tiktok doesn't pay you for views either or so, oh it, it, so okay, so the Spotify, the the streaming platforms in general just don't pay for it. They just they really don't. Um, we're getting pennies for the streams. That's just all artists across the board. Right. Uh, so so that's not really a reliable stream of income. And and even when we're having money come from that, I'm taking that and reinvesting it into the business. Right. So like TikToks cost me zero dollars to make, right? But um, the music videos that I want to shoot and if we want to get the album mastered and if we want to do these things that cost money. So all the money we're making off the stream is going right back into that stuff. Right. Um, then the, the, so TikTok has the creator fund and like the, 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 the creator program and these type of things, but they're not available in Canada. Right. So U S creators, uh, uh, I don't know what is the situation is now, but at the time, my understanding was U S creators got paid for views. Um, and that infrastructure just wasn't here yet. So I really was getting all these views and getting zero dollars off the like That's zero. Right. Um, which again is not something that like it's TikTok's fault. Like, yeah, you gotta, you know, implement the proper infrastructure for things right. like that. Right. I mean, there's a whole CRTC thing going on down here, right? To figure that out. Like, like we're, we're it's Canada, we it's it takes us longer to get everything anyway. Yeah, I mean, so it is <laughs> um, so yeah, at this point, like. I was broke, bro. Like I, had, I was broke. I had no bread. Um, still recording on the exact same mic setup I got in 2017. Same, right. mic, same interface. Um, I was working when I was in university, yeah. and I, you know, the last of my paychecks from that to get some speakers. Right. Um, and then after that, I got a ring light, and after that, like I, I was broke. One thing I will say about that grind, though, is that, is that when you're in a position where you have to make it happen, yeah, because yeah, yeah. we we chose careers where it's like. There's no rule book for this. Yeah. Well, I mean, especially you. You're in a new terrain. Right. I, I'm 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 trying to be a, like being a rapper by itself is hard enough to figure out. Now I'm a rapper and it's a pandemic and I can't do a live show. Mm. Uh, and I had to just like there's no rule book for this. We kind of just got to figure it out as we go along. Yeah. Um but when 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 the stakes are high, that's when you know what I mean that's when you really figure out if you're built for this or not. Yeah. Um so I mean, but so for now, like the mon the money is mainly from like these sponsorships, then right? Mm -hmm. Like with the wealth simple and stuff like that, and that's what okay. okay. Um, uh, 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 also, there's like so so now it's a little bit more complicated because now there's like you know sync licensing, and I'm doing those type of things now. Um, one of my songs, explain um, that sync licensing. So sync licensing is where you know TV shows, movies, any of those things, if they want to use your song. Oh, interesting. Okay, okay, cool, cool. Yeah, use your song in whatever they're doing. Um, so, and I switched over my uh, uh, distributor. So now I distribute through United Masters and, and they do a great job of just pitching artists to, to, you know, shows and whatever, and being like, right. Hey, if y'all want to use this, we can use this. So you could pay them, pay us, and then we'll give it to them. Right. Um, we're really, really good job of that. Um, but yeah, so, so my main income now is from the sponsorships, the streaming revenue is really, really good, but the, I, all of that goes directly right back into to the music itself. Um, and then the the sync licensing. So those are like the, the main ways that I make money now. Okay, okay, cool. So like, uh, no, no, like, let me go. I'm gonna go right back to the beginning of your story, because uh, like, uh, just to kind of flesh out a few details. You came here when you were about ten or nine, ten, right? Uh, around there, like, yeah. Sorry. Like right before I turned ten. Like like right literally before. a month and two months before I turned ten. Did you speak English? Oh, okay, okay. So you you spoke English. Okay, so. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it, it, so, so in Nigeria and like in I fucking most African country or colonialism, but <laughs> <laughs> English is like the the main language in Nigeria. Okay, okay, yeah, cool, cool. Because I mean, like, cause, but it's still like I'm sure, because again, you're a wordsmith, and mm -hmm. as a word, but it's like you got to catch on to the local lingo, and I'm sure there's still a learning curve in terms of that, right? But you um, said, yeah, yeah, so, uh, somewhat, somewhat. Well, I mean, no, it, I'm I'm kind of just relating to my own situation. I was I'm a refugee from Sri Lanka, right? So I was as a child. So like, so for us, there was the language learning curve. So I don't, I don't know if it's the same for you. But um, you said your dad was a fan of Biggie. So is that from back in Nigeria? Your dad was a huge fan. Of Biggie? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so growing up, he was a mat. Like I mean. Him and my uncles, like that whole West Coast, like not just the West, like the West Coast was huge, but Biggie was the dude on the East Coast for these guys. Like, right, right, right. Yeah. Imagine how hard it is to, to really follow what's going on. Your dad, my age? He is, you said you're 40? I just turned 40. 50. He just turned. Oh, so, all right. So, yeah. so he was like, you know, 
he's trying to figure out like or not trying to figure out but he, him and his his brothers like my uncles were massive fans of hip-hop like just huge they, they love the west coast but biggie something about biggie my dad every time growing up every time he get in the whip he's putting in the biggie cd and he's spinning it was biggie and michael jackson those are the two that he was <laughs> that's right um, yeah. so yeah he was a massive biggie fan massive yeah. And I don't know if this is a slip or this is me misremembering because you said, um, it was, I mean, I love this moment where you were on stage singing Wave and Flag, but you said it was Cardi. And I'm, is, is it Cardi or Akon? Not Akon, sorry. Kanon. Kanon. Was it Kanon? We're talking about the song of the, and then it goes back. And yeah. then it goes, uh, that, uh, isn't that, yeah. It was Kanon. It was Kanon. I don't know why I said it was Cardi. I think Cardi was on the song. Okay, yeah. So I don't know if the, I don't know if there's like a collabo version of it. So yeah, yeah I just wanted to make sure. It was it was it was definitely Kanon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because Cardi was fresh on the brain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've also been on that song. Sorry, Car- Cardi was what? I, I think Cardi was he's fresh on the brain, and then oh. also he might have been on the song. Yeah. yeah, but but I love that story because you see how it's kind of beautiful. Where like that was the sound of Toronto back then, and that's what helped you create near the sound of Toronto now. So there's a, you you know that's my fucking lead. <laughs> 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 okay, so there. So I love <laughs> I love that detail. But it's like, and I also want to know, like, I mean, because like, look. You name dropped so many of my favorites. You know, you're talking about Biggie. You're talking about, I think you said Nas. And, you know, you're talking about, like, all the, I don't know, I, you didn't throw in Talib, and I won't hold that against you. Oh, oh, oh I just forgot to say the name Talib. Black, that, that most definitely Black Star? Bro. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, yeah, Reflections Eternal was, like, I, I spent years on that album. Um, but, you know, like, um, but, okay, so, so like, but it, here's my thing, though. So the other 20-year-olds I've met, I mean, you're, what are you, 22 now? 22, yeah. 22 don't really have that lexicon. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you're seeing the same. Like, are you finding that your generation, the people around you do not know, do not listen to these people? Yeah, <laughs> generally, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, you know what it is though? I think my generation is weird because this is sort of the best generation to be born in and then learn the old hip hop. Mm. So easy to find it. I mean, Spotify exists, Apple Music exists. And, and the way I found these dudes is like, so so I had gone to visit my I have cousins in, in the states. So I went to go visit my cousins in the states. And while I'm linking with my cousins, he was like, Yo, have you ever you ever did a Jay-Z deep dive? And I was like, No, nah, not like a deep dive. And he was like, Yo, I'm gonna put you on a Jay-Z. So he puts me on <laughs> So I'm listening to Jay. And I'm like, yo, this guy's in his bag. And I'll hear, you know, whoever rapping on the song, and I'm like, yo, 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 they're sick. Yo, who is this? Then you do the listen, you listen to their discography, hear another feature, and you go, yo, who's that? And then you take the deep dive. Next yeah. thing you know, you just discovered 22 rappers, you know what I mean, from, from 1990 to, to 04, 05, in a span of like a month, all of a sudden, I'm I'm fully, fully just, just locked into this. And my generation is weird, because like, everybody will have like one or two old school people that they really, really rock with. Mm-hmm. Hip hop, like, forget it. Like, Dudes, dudes are 22 they don't they don't care about none of that maybe jay-z yeah 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 yeah. and that's only because jay-z is so present right now right it's like i mean like that's the thing i'm so curious as to like how your generation reacted to last night's halftime show bro <laughs> i don't think you understand like <laughs> I, i'm not actually no you do understand i know you understand watching all of them on first of all i i love kendrick lamar so much with everything oh, so. yes i wish there was more of him last night that was my big disappointment last night like like what like he's He's the only one actually innovating his own music on that stage. And uh, that, that's what I wanted more of. Because everybody else playing the classics, you know what I mean? Exactly. I think that was an insane... Mary J. Blige, yeah. to be able to, like, as a performer, mm-hmm. performing by itself is hard. It's very difficult. And it's very taxing on your body. For her to be able to do what she did and to have the breath control to sing the way she was singing and still hit the choreo like she's 22. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Bro, like such an insane, insane halftime show. Probably my probably my favorite halftime show I've ever watched. Yeah. yeah. Well, see, it's interesting because like for me, it's like, I guess I was so hyped for it going in that I was left a little like wanting more and deflated. Whereas like I had like let's I mean and this is so this is gonna sound so awful like I had no expectations for the J Lo Shakira and I can't stand J Lo's music still can't stand J Lo's music but Shakira <laughs> blew me away with those foot moves the, oh, the South, Af- the, yeah, South <laughs> African foot that that I came away like ooh Shakira is awesome from that whereas in this one I was like I wanted more <laughs> even though it's like you know when do I get to see a crip walk at the Super Bowl like bro it's got to do up the seas at the Super Bowl man <laughs> you know on okay. national television yeah like that was like it's like there's so much to appreciate and then. 
But then, uh, yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, I didn't feel like we needed 50 Cent. I didn't feel like we needed... Yeah, that, that was a surprise. And he was... The one thing I listened to, I don't know, he was hanging upside down for a minute. <laughs> I know. It's like, a hot minute, bro. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, so your generation, just like, none of that would have necessarily affected them, essentially. Uh, it it kind of depends. Like, for the most part, because we look at these people as, as like, the old school legends. So, like, the big hits, like, most of the people from my generation don't know. Eminem is Eminem. I mean, yeah. everybody knows some M. Um the iconic tracks the the the, the iconic dre tracks and iconic snoop tracks like everybody knows those ones um oh um, so is more, yeah kendrick is more like you know he came out and he did all right like right. that that is that is a that's an anthem that was an anthem for, yeah, for, yeah, yeah, especially yeah. for my generation because i was in high school when uh to pimp a butterfly dropped i was in grade 12 yeah. um so yeah that was just like like such an amazing halftime show and it may vary person to person but i think like my generation caught like you know we felt like a shred of <laughs> what? Yeah. Really, really, really was. Yeah, yeah. Well then, okay. So like, I mean, this is, so now does, does the fact that you are so studied in all of this, like old school, I mean, I, 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 I cringe at the word old school. Cause for me, I, when I hear old school, I'm thinking KRS one and public right. <laughs> and right. stuff like that. Right. So, but um, like the, the fact that you're so well-versed in that area, is that what helps, um, is that the ammo for your work that, that makes you stand apart from the other TikTok rappers that are coming out right now? Yeah, I think I think like stylistically, that's sort of where my biggest like that's what contributes to me standing out the most. Um, mm-hmm. I, like I'm a rapper, rapper before everything else. Like I'm a, I'm a rapper. Um, and, and my favorite thing in the whole world to do is just is bar out and to just really rap. Mm-hmm. Um, and not just not, and like I, I don't I don't like putting things on a pedestal and being like once upon a time I was one of those dudes where I don't want to hear none of that mumble rap and I don't want to hear none of that boom, 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 boom. and that's when I was like falling in love with the with the old school stuff and I kind of took on that like I don't want to hear none of this mumble rap like whatever but it's also like bro time and place like it's okay to have fun like you know I mean, it's okay to listen to something and just and just bob your head and not really care what he's saying like that's fine <laughs> um but stylistically for me my biggest thing is I always want to you know make sure the pen itself stands out in everything I do right. Uh, the the with influences like most death and 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 you know what i mean and in redefinition him and talib going back and forth and you know what i mean <laughs> six syllable rhymes get like those are the dudes i grew up on yeah, yeah, yeah. those are the dudes i really really fell in love with listening to like growing up so um stylistically i always try to just do something pen wise that's just better than the last thing i did as far as the pen game goes and mm-hmm. that's that's just my biggest goal with everything i do musically so sweet, sweet. So then, like, okay. So then, I mean, and then talk to me though. Like, like, there's these di- different things you do on TikTok, right? So clearly, you clear, you create your own videos. You, you, and uh, clearly, like, so you spend an entire day on these raps and whatever. I guess formulating the raps and the video and everything. Like, I guess, okay. What about this thing where you take someone else's thing and you duet? Is it called duet with them when you like kind of rap over? Like, I mean, is that like? I'm just trying to understand. Is this the new frontier of music? Is this how we're gonna consume music? Like, oh, so. And so this, and this is a weird thing. I want to give a definitive answer, but I can't because especially over the last five, six years, every two years, music shifts in some gigantic way. Mm-hmm. Um, I think right now it's absolutely TikTok. Like that, that is the biggest way. And, and the thing with TikTok and making music on TikTok is some people are trying to make music for TikTok, um, which is fine if that's what you're trying to do. Like, you know what I mean? Like if that's your thing, absolutely go for it, go crazy and, and do it to the best that you can do it. Um, but I'm trying to make, more trying to make albums I'm, I'm trying to make projects like i'm trying to make the the my my, my point of reference is to pimp a butterfly i want to i want to make something that 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 sticks in the same way that that project stuck something mm-hmm. that when you listen to one song you have to spin the whole project front to back yeah. uh, something when you listen to you 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 you're like yo this is amazing and then and lyrically there's a bunch of stuff going on and then you come back three weeks later and you go yo i didn't even catch that you come back another three weeks later and you go oh i didn't even catch that like that's really what i'm trying to do i'm trying you know, to to I'm pin my to- butterfly is still in to pin my butterfly is still in my car's six disc changer and i still Crazy. <laughs> in my car but yes go ahead yeah i, I literally have a there's a typical butterfly poster on my wall right now right? <laughs> problem ever yeah yeah it's a great. um Okay, sorry, I interrupted you. Was that were you finished your thought there? Or? I, was, I was pretty much done. The, the all right, all right, cool. So then, uh, yeah. So I mean, but then you say that there's people who make music for TikTok, but then I guess the economics of that is just then to get land sponsorship because there's no other way of. So so there's a couple different ways. So okay, so as far as like being a musician on TikTok, it's a little different than being like anybody else on TikTok. 
as far as like any other creatives because other creatives they're making their bread if they're in the states create a program and uh sponsorships right um as a musician your goal is not to just stop at tiktok your goal is to you know what i mean be a musician and go right beyond. exactly yeah i guess so, live shows right right right. like li- live shows are also a very important aspect but people want to transition into really being a staple in the music industry so right. what they do is is it's funny enough because this is also a big part of what label strategies are like now a lot of labels now are just like our plan is to just get the song big on tiktok and mm-hmm. have a big tiktok song right right there's a lot of songs that you hear them all the time the astronaut in the ocean and and you know i mean there's a whole lot of songs that blew the hell up on tiktok the the one song about uh, uh rocks and rocks and these are songs with like hundreds of millions of plays i didn't know that i didn't when you first of all when you said roxanne i'm thinking of the old version of the song oh, really? <laughs> no, this new, what is this new song i don't know no there's like there's a lot of songs on tiktok that like like have hundreds of millions of streams okay okay yeah, yeah. Place at a point now where well, you know what i mean i i have i have a couple hundred thousand not a couple i think i have like a hundred and something 120 something thousand months of listeners on spotify that ain't shit yeah. <laughs> That really ain't shit compared to what everybody else got going on. There's, there's, there's dudes operating out of their bedrooms right now, throwing some slappers up. They got 3 million monthly listeners on Spotify. Right. And, and just because when TikTok itself is a platform for you to reach so many people, and it's just that there's no upper limit on how many people you can reach with this thing. There's right. zero limit to it. Um, so if you drop a song on TikTok, and everyone's using it as a TikTok sound. You know what I mean? Gonna drop Push and P. And Push and P is a massive song on TikTok. Yeah, I got to <laughs> Well, because I mean, isn't Old Town Road like a TikTok, TikTok success story? It was one of the biggest ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. Old Town okay. Road was, and Lil Nas X is a genius. I think he's one of the most, in, like, creatively genius. Yeah. Um, First of all, he should have had the halftime show just because of the year. Yeah. And also, they never had a gay halftime show performer not even like I give it to him next year though i think i think i think that's the next year thing. you think the nfl is going to cross the gay barrier after 70 years <laughs> like i think i think the nfl is at a point where they're going to be like oh no look no look to, no the blacks look, we, give, <laughs> we give you rap all right, yeah. all right then they're going to go to lola I, I, I have a sneaky feeling but he's very very talented yeah 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 um, old town road is another one of those songs like it, it it he he marketed it properly as far as like you know using the memes and all that and tiktok latched onto it and next thing you know, there's seven million people making videos with your song in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's interesting, though. Like, I mean, what you suggested. So there's like so the labels are trying to create songs that'll go viral on TikTok. Meanwhile, y'all are here creating viral songs, but trying to reach kind of that label more classic. That, that that's a interesting. And TikTok's at the, TikTok's almost at the center of all of it. Like TikTok has shifted the music industry in so many, especially over the last like really two years, two three years, like. Yeah. TikTok has shifted the entirety of the music industry. Um, a lot of people are finding music on TikTok. Well, and I guess that's because, like, I mean, like you said, you went to TikTok because you can't have live shows. Mm-hmm. And so, in a way, this is the... Because, I mean, I guess, like, everyone takes a song, creates a dance to it. That is our the way we're replacing a concert of being all together and dancing to a certain song by posting your dance to a song. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, it, it, to, to some degree, that's definitely a big aspect of it. Like, like the the. But also, I think I think it's the ability to to take the song itself and use it to represent yourself mm. on the actual platform, right? Because people are going in, and it'll be a million videos under us under like you know based on a song, but no two videos will be the same. Right, right. Taking the song and now applying their own visual, you know, individuality to it, and then that's when it now becomes something bigger than just the song. Now it's like now it's almost a movement. And I think the dope part about TikTok is that, and a lot of people hate this because you know they think it's it's it lowers the quality of the music and whatever, whatever. But um, the dope thing about TikTok is when somebody takes your song and they turn it into a movement, you don't really get to orchestrate that. The people decide if they like your song enough for it to be a movement. Right, right. I think that's really, really dope. And I, I, th- I think it's almost reminiscent of the early days of hip hop where you had the, like there's the gatekeepers and there's the OGs that are really going to tell you whether or not, like, you know, if this is something we're rocking with the radio stations, whatever. But with more access and being able to go direct to consumer with this music, the people really get to decide if they're rocking with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. If they like you, sucks. <laughs> and and if, they, if they like you, sick, you're good, you're golden. You just gotta, they just gotta like you. And I think that's so awesome. Yeah, yeah, no, that is amazing. Um, but then again, 
TikTok algorithms. That's a whole algorithms is a whole other thing, right? Like when you talk about like what is at play, what the what these codes tell people. Um, look, I got so I mean uh, the one TikTok that like uh, was thrown at me right off the get go is your anti vaxxer yeah <laughs> is that video still on, up like because i found it on reddit as opposed to on your actual it's still on your thing right yeah talk to me about first of all about because i mean like i think we should just come right on and say like you know it's hard for the black community to trust this vaccine and you coming from i mean i don't know what you're surrounded by within your own family within your friend circles and stuff um coming out and having that conversation what did that mean for you so again like as somebody who is who is very scared of covid because of just health you know what i mean i'm 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 an asthmatic like that's not a game i want to play yeah. um i think i had seen it's very easy on on the internet for 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 people to pool ideas and for conspiracies to form and all that and i understand being members of the black community like historically yeah 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 it hasn't been good for us <laughs> it just hasn't yeah. um they did some shit they, they did some shit and, yeah. and like i absolutely understand but I also think we need to be able to look at circumstances and realize what's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, when you've done the, the research into the history and, 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 and all the things we've been through, this situation was never reminiscent of the things that we've been through in the past. They weren't isolating us saying, hey, only black people come get the vaccine. Right, right, right. They were saying, no, 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 no. White people, if any, and, and funny enough, we were in a situation where it was hard to even get access to the vaccines. <laughs> yeah. And then it, it, it was just, it was so uh, just, it, it, it had been a couple months straight of people just, I don't trust that vaccine. And friends, personal friends of mine, being, I don't trust it and I don't trust it and I don't trust it. And it was just really annoying. And I'm the type of dude that like, like, again, I write every day. And like the TikToks you see are just me writing and trying to figure out like what's going on in my head on paper. And yeah. I had written it and I was like, I'm so sick of y'all. Like, I'm tired of y'all. Like, it's okay to be scared and it's okay to be, que- it's okay to question things and it's okay to ask. But at the same time, you can't just be like, oh no. You got it. You got yeah. it. It has to get to somewhere. You know what I mean? And it was putting not just, you know, them at risk. I mean, if you don't, if you want to put yourself at risk, do your thing. Fine. That's your business. But also like, I don't want to be, I don't want to go outside and worry if me being vaccinated, if no one else is vaccinated, it doesn't matter if I'm vaccinated. Yeah. 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 You know what I mean, and, and, and I just, I just very much was not, I, it was just so infuriating to me. Um, but I was like, all right, I can't go on there and do some Kanye type shit where I go on there and I'm like, fuck y'all, get the goddamn vaccine. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll go on there and crack a one, two joke. Like, yeah, I crack a tra- crack some jokes, go on there, get some, you know what I mean? Make it a little funny, make it a little cool. I didn't think it was going to be anything. Right. I posted the video and after like two days, it had like 150K views. Right. Then I was in a recording session and I opened my phone and on day three, and it's like, oh, 500K. I put it down five minutes later, boom, 600K, 700K. Seven, boom, all of a sudden the video was everywhere and i was just i was not part of my plan i didn't plan for that to happen um that video was also a very very interesting situation i feel like that video is where i where i realized like okay i could do this for real because, oh, what, what stage was this when was this so this was last summer towards i want to say i want to say august so when you were about to crack like a million yeah yeah this is this, this, this is pre-cracking a million Okay, okay. And and I posted it and I was like, the response that I got, it was so interesting to see that people would the way people came for me. And and, and like I understand in I was on like yeah, in a bad way. And I mean, like there was definitely a large oh, just outpour of support, but at the same time, there was a lot of backlash that I got based on that video. And a lot of people were telling me, I hope you die, hope you and your whole family get, I hope you're all vaccinated and the vaccine kills you. And I hope this, and I hope that. And, 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 and you're, 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 you're a sad excuse for a black man. And when I see you, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And I'm sitting there and I was like, so if I could sit here and watch all these people say this about me and I'm, I don't feel no ways, right. I'll be okay. Like, <laughs> I was like, I'll be all right. Like, these, there's, there's people saying some foul shit about me um uh off the strength of that video and at the end of the day funny enough everyone got vaccinated anyway so all the worries that everybody had went straight out the window because everyone yeah. got vaxxed and everyone was fine yeah, people, yeah. People, people were painting it out to be this 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 terrifying thing and i understand the origins of it but it's like 
like, come on. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we got we, we to gotta be able to, to, to do some Googles and get to a point. Were, were you vaccinated yet when you when you made that song? Because it was it. Oh, you because is it because you were you're immunocompromised? You got it earlier. I was able to. I was able to. I was vaccinated before. Oh, wait, no, you would have qualified by that point. It's August, right? It was August. It was August. So I I got my second dose. I want to say probably a month before. Before you, yeah, yeah. I want to say about a month before I posted. But that is a good test of metal. <laughs> it's like you put up with it, right? Because <laughs> it would have been crazy if I went on there and I said that. Then they were like, "Are you vaccinated?" And I was like, "No." That would have been insane. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, I'm not eligible yet. I'm waiting. Right? Yeah, I mean, that would have been so wild. But, but at that point, it was like, it was it was commonplace enough to where everybody could actually, you know, right. at least book and be able to go get one eventually. Right, right, right. Well, and okay, so then, I mean, so I, uh, and I realize we're getting close to that time. So just one kind of question. I mean, you you mentioned uh, earlier the, the the that you have anxiety and you work through. Uh, I mean, um, not a lot of people are open about this. Uh, can you like like so uh, explain a little more like? When you say anxiety, is it's like is 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 so this is therapeutic? Is the anxiety crippling in other ways in terms of not letting you function in other kinds of jobs and stuff? Or yeah, so so I feel like it's it's grown and gotten somewhat worse over the last oh. decade or so. Um, first, I experienced it when I was in high school, but I don't really know what it was. Um, and it wasn't too severe. It was just it was just all of a sudden I'm in I'm in moments and I could feel my heart beating. I could feel my heart racing. I'm getting a little dizzy, but I didn't know what was happening. Um, got to university and I would be in exam rooms having full-on panic attacks um literally sitting there shaking I can't breathe and then vigilator has to take me outside so I can breathe and, right. and cover and, and and go to the bathroom and, and splash water and drink water and try to breathe and then I come back in the exam room and there's five minutes left in the exam you know what I mean it was yeah. it was it was a very 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 rough time over those years in school I tried to go uh, uh uh to counseling one time and they just gave me a pamphlet and I was like okay so like <laughs> you know what i mean like what is this so this you guys aren't helping me so i tried to just figure it out and it didn't work and it just got progressively worse at some point i went to counseling again um and that was really really helpful because like my the, the counselor i was seeing was just very very flat out with me like yo look this is the thing that you're dealing with and i was almost in denial like ah, this ain't. like you know i mean you know you know how it is for for dudes like you coming from africa yeah yeah yeah, yeah. uh 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 and it's like culturally it doesn't exist yeah and i came here and i'm like me and he's like nah, there's no way i was like i'll be all right i'll be good i'll be blessed I just, I just need to you know go to the club one time and i'll come back and i'll be blessed and it, it started getting just significantly worse but when i started going to counseling it, i wouldn't say it improved but i was able to understand what was happening i right. think being able to understand and come to terms with like all right this is something that i i, I currently struggle with and it's something that i that i'm currently you know battling with I think that put me in a position to be able to sort of understand a myself and understand the situations that I operate in and how to navigate my life better. Because when you know what's happening to you, you're, you're able to prep for it. You're able to see signs, you're able to see triggers, you're able to, you know what I mean? Understand certain things. I have panic attacks on a very regular basis. Um, and, and there, I don't even necessarily have like one trigger for my panic attacks. It's just, I could be, I'll wake up in the morning and I'm like, no, I'm going to die like right, today, right. today. Yeah. um I've, I've recently been experiencing these hmm. so like I, I, so I, if you told me this six months ago i would have been like what the fuck is he talking about but now i finally get it yeah and it's, it's one of those things that where i was in the same i have i have friends who suffered with the same thing and they would explain it to me and i was like well, i get it bro like, yeah. what do you mean and and it's one of those things where um in order for me to hold myself accountable for you know working actively at this thing that I'm suffering with and, and, and paying attention to what's going on and understanding that it's a part of my life. I have to allow it to actually become a part of my life. Right. Um, and I feel like the more comfortable I get with, you know, as a musician and as a rapper, especially like I'm trying to give people every like all of me. Right. You know, I want to, I want to, I want to give them myself, but if I'm holding back this massive part of my life, like what well, I, I can't trickle down some, some watered down version of myself to these people. Um, so I just made the decision like, all right, it makes me feel better to get this off my chest. Maybe it can help somebody else feel better to, to, to know, Oh wait, yo, this is this guy, this guy that I like, I like his raps. He's also going through the same thing I'm going through. Um, and, and, and I, I'm not gonna lie. I do make it mostly for myself. Like it is mostly a therapeutic tool for me. Um, but the other side of it where people actually benefit from it is a fantastic payoff. And I just love the fact that I'm able to build some form of community where people are able to look at me and go, oh no, that like, because he 
is okay with admitting the fact that he's suffering from this thing. Yeah, yeah. And he's admitting that he, that he's gone through and he's working through it and he's getting to the point where he's he's comfortable and 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 it's a and he understands it's a process and he's showing us that it's a process. Maybe I could go through it too. Maybe maybe I could figure it out. Um so yeah, that's kind of that's kind of my big spiel on anxiety. But then sorry, one last question. But what like how does being online exacerbate that though? Like, I mean, because I mean, you know, like most people talk about like how being online so much creates mental health stresses and issues and stuff, right? Like, uh, I mean, are you, is it, is it a two-way street there? So it kind of is. And I, I try, I try to limit the way that I'm online. So I'm online and I'm posting, but I'm not scrolling all day. Um, I'm very much like, like I'll, I'll go and I'll write and I'll post and my entire day is just managing this anxiety. Um, <laughs> my friends and family notice that anybody who's ever tried to get in contact with me, I will leave you on red for four days. <laughs> I will open my phone and I'll see the notifications and I put it down and go, not today. Yeah, and I, yeah. I'm able to just leave it for hours at a time um, and come back to it when I need to come back to it. Like if I, if I have to get a, get a text off or if I have to call somebody, I'll do that. But I try my best to avoid, like people call it doom scrolling, where you just scroll and you just allow your anxiety to get worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And you allow yourself to spiral. I try my best to avoid that. Yeah. Um, I'm online and I'm posting, but I'm not scrolling all day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, amazing. Listen, dude, thank you. Thank you so much for this conversation. I know we like stretched it right to the time and you got a thing to do right away because you're up. I like I was talking to a homie. Like, this is dope. <laughs> thank you. Thanks to Rad and Akintoye for sharing their conversation. You can find Akintoye on TikTok at Yeah, it's a K, all one word. And you can read our Sound of Toronto Right Now cover story at nowtoronto.com slash music. Like I said, there's so much this week that we split the podcast into two parts. Part two will drop Saturday morning, so keep an eye on your feed. Wear a mask, keep your distance, and please get your booster. Come back tomorrow for Jennifer Holness, Suds Sutherland, Colin Mockery, and friend of the show, Andrew Fung.